Hello students. Hope you all are fine in this present situation. Today we shall be reading or discussing on Macbeth, a play written by Sir William Shakespeare. The story we will read here is not written by Shakespeare, it is written by Charles Lamb and his sister Mary Lamb. They took the stories from Shakespeare's original plays and they assimilated it with the name Tales from Shakespeare. You will get that in page number 35. So before we start, let us know something about Macbeth. Macbeth is a tragedy, a tragedy of vaulting ambition. Macbeth was a brave, courageous soldier who is very much loved by his king. He was very much responsible as well as respected by his fellow friends and the king's men. But here we will see how a good man, a good soldier becomes a bad one just because of his ambition. Macbeth's ambition was not at all a good one because Macbeth wanted to kill the king. Before we start reading, we must know something about the characters. In page number 35, we will see the characters in the story. At first, this is Duncan. Duncan is the king of Scotland. Then you will see Malcolm, Duncan's son, Donalman, Duncan's another son. Then comes Macbeth, Lord of Glamis, a general in Duncan's army. Then Lady Macbeth, Macbeth's wife, Banco, one of Duncan's generals and a good friend of Macbeth, Fleance. Banco's son, Macduff, Lord of Fifth, the three witches, the spirits of the dead. So Macbeth starts with the appearance of the three witches. In Shakespeare's time, this black magic, witches, ghosts, they used to believe that they are present. In modern day, we don't believe such things, but in Shakespeare's plays, we very often see such things. So, Macbeth was taken from Hollinshed's Chronicle. Shakespeare has taken the original story from Hollinshed's Chronicle, and then he wrote this play, Macbeth, which is the shortest tragedies written by Shakespeare and probably the most fascinating one. Page number 36, you will see the scene, Scotland. When Duncan was king of Scotland, one of his family, Macbeth, was highly thought of at court because of his great courage in war. So at the very beginning of the story, we get an idea that Macbeth was highly courageous. As Macbeth and other general called Banco were returning from a war, they stopped when three strange figures appeared. These three strange figures are no one but the witches. The figures looked like women, except that they had beard. So they looked like women, but they were not women. With their lined skin and strange clothes, they did not look like any other creatures seen on earth. So they are not normal human beings. They are not seen in roads or in bazaar or in marketplaces. 
they are something different. They are not earthly creatures. They are unearthly creatures. When Macbeth spoke to them, they each put a finger to their thin lips as if they wanted to silence him. Then suddenly each of them spoke. You will see there is a box. You will see there is a box. This box there are speeches of which is it is the original speech written by Shakespeare. It is not the speech that comes after meeting Macbeth. Rather, this speech is the starting of the play Macbeth. The play starts with the appearance of three witches, and here is the speech. I just I will just go through it. Num number one witch. Which number one? When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? The second witch speech speaks. When the hurly ball is done, when the battle's lost and won. The third witch. That will be ere uh, the set of sun. First witch again. Where the place? Second witch. Upon the heath. Third one. They are to meet with Macbeth. First witch again. I come, Grand Mother King. Witch number two, Paddock calls. Anon, fair is foul and foul is fair, over through the fog and filthy air. So these all are archaic words. It will be quite hard for you people to understand this. There is no need to learn this at your age. This is just, just to get a hint. That this is how the play actually starts. But not in this story. In this story, this dialogue has nothing to do. Okay, this is the beginning of the original play, Macbeth. Just go through it. No need to put enough attention. Right now, right at your age, so, there is not given at the end of the page. Shakespeare began his play with this musical chant by the three witches. They agree to meet Macbeth when he returns from work. At this meeting, they tell Macbeth that one day he will be king of Scotland. So I will just just go a bit backward. When Macbeth spoke to them, they each put a finger to their thin lips as if they wanted to silence him. Then suddenly each of them spoke. Let's see what they speak. What they speak? Greetings, Lord of Clans. The first said. So the first witch. Hmm? greeted Macbeth as Lord of Glens. Second witch. Greetings, Lord of Koja, said the second. The second witch greeted Macbeth as Lord of Koja. And the third one greeted him. O future king, cried third. <laughs> so, with this greetings, Macbeth became astonished, surprised. Because Macbeth was neither the Lord of Koda, nor the future king. Macbeth was astonished that these strange figures knew him. He was even more astonished by their prophecies. Prophecies means future telling, foretelling. The Lord of Koda is still alive, he cried, and I shall never be king while King Duncan's sons live. So Macbeth was very much pragmatic, practical, by asking them, how can I be the Koda? Because the Koda is still alive and I shall never be the king because the king which is Duncan has two sons Malcolm and Dunalman while they are alive how will I be the king now the creatures turned to Banco and said these strange words you Banco are less great than Macbeth and greater second one you Banco are less happy than Macbeth and happier the third one, you, Banco, shall never be king, but your sons shall be kings in Scotland. Now, they said to Macbeth that he will be the king. He will become the king someday. And then they switched to Banco and said, you will not be the king, but your sons will be the king. As they spoke, they turned in the air and disappeared. After foretelling, after their prophecies, towards Macbeth and Banco, the witches somehow 
evaporated. The journalists then knew that they had been speaking with witches. Now suddenly both Manco and Macbeth realized that the three whom they were speaking to are none but witches. As they stood thinking about the prophecy, messengers from the king arrived to speak to Macbeth. Now suddenly a messenger came to speak to Macbeth. Let's see what the messenger says. Duncan, the king of Scotland, has made you Lord of Corder, they told him. Now the messenger told Macbeth that you are now the new Lord of Corder. Just remind your brains, remind your thinkings. Macbeth was the Lord of Glemis. The Corder's Lord is still alive. So Macbeth had no opportunity to become the Corder. But the king suddenly told that Macbeth, you were the new lord of Corder. Just think what the witches came and said to Macbeth. Macbeth, you will be the lord of Corder. And just, just after that prophecy, Macbeth suddenly comes to know that he is the new lord of Corder. So Macbeth became puzzled, astonished, surprised. Macbeth was so astonished that at first he could not speak. Perhaps the third which will also be right, he thought. And one day I shall be Scotland's king. So the very first time the ambition of, of kingship, the ambition of being the king came in Macbeth's mind. He thought, if the witches are right, then I shall be the king of Scotland someday. He turned to Banco, says the witches' prophecies for me has come true. Do you also hope that your sons shall be kings of Scotland? Uh, suddenly Macbeth turns to Banco and asks, and asks him, Banco, what do you think of gaining the kingship? You shall not be the king, but the witches say that your sons shall be the king. What do you think? Their words have made you hopeful, Banco said. The Banco is more practical. He said to Macbeth, but Macbeth, don't give so much importance to the equivocal speeches of the witches because these all are these all are fantasies. Don't believe in them. But sometimes witches tell us the truth in little things to lead us into evil. So Banco is warning Macbeth not to rely on those witches because if he does so, he may be on the wrong path, the path of evil. All his good abilities will suddenly choke down and he will someday become evil. This is a warning given to Macbeth by his friend Banco. But Macbeth had begun to believe the witches. Macbeth had begun to believe the witches' prophecy and he ignored Banco's warning. The warnings of Banco has been laid aside by Mac. From that moment on, he only thought about one thing. How could he become the king of Scotland? So, in Macbeth's mind, a new thing appeared. What it is? It is how to become the king of Scotland. So Macbeth was a brave, courageous soldier, a peerless kingsman to Duncan. Now suddenly, after hearing the prophecies of the witches, Macbeth lost all his good abilities and a new thing started to, started to point out his mind started to poke his brain, his nerves, that is, he shall be the king of Scotland. So this is how the prophecy or the equivocational speech of the witches or the foretelling of the witches suddenly nurtures the human Macbeth and Macbeth is now placed in a position where he starts hoping for, for something more good 
something that he thinks that I deserve. What is that? That is the kingship. Now Macbeth wants to become the king and the entire story, the rest of the story is on this particular subject. So Macbeth's ambition is the pivotal force round whom the entire action pivots. Banco's warning has been refused or rejected by Macbeth just because he wants to become the king. So on our next class, probably it will be held in Zoom classes in a school. There we will read it more firmly, more clearly, more detailed. Still then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay at your home. Hope we will meet soon. Thank you class.